so a few days ago india's third mission to moon took off and if this mission were to be successful that soft landing takes place india will become the fourth country to achieve that feat so far only russia china and the us they have achieved it a soft landing but one question that many people have asked is should a developing country like india invest in space exploration india has so many problems and rightfully so poverty corruption poor education why should a developing country like india waste millions of dollars for something called moon mission makes no sense and i know some of you are thinking along those same lines and we have a tendency to question everything and that is absolutely fine but here i will give you a neutral view without aligning with any political parties i've criticized all parties but here let's give the credit when it is due every logical indian should cheer for isro's remarkable efforts we have also analyzed debated and understood the history let me give you a historical explanation why india should perhaps invest more in space exploration go back to 15th century world who were the most powerful prosperous empires back then ming in china moguls in india but all of that changed why in comparison to ming's china or moguls in india portuguese and spanish they were very poor but these nations transformed because they were curious it was in 15th century portugal and spain started exploring seas and because of their explorations because of their curiosity they flooded the europe with gold and silver of course later british east india company will also join in they will also keep on innovating you should always remember one thing that it is the poor who needs innovation the most why because the rich can survive because of the wealth that they've accumulated in so many years the way moguls were surviving in the 15th century but the only way poor countries or poor people can break the poverty cycle is when they think and innovate out of the box america became superpower because of computing revolution and that computing revolution was itself an accident at that time americans and british they were busy breaking the german codes during the second world war it was in that process that they started the computing revolution same story with internet revolution it will not be wrong to say that silicon valley today is a side effect of what was happening during the space and defense research near san francisco the main difference between the leader and a follower is a leader always has a long term vision they are not just restricted to their thoughts in the first order derivatives they are thinking beyond second order or perhaps third order everything that is transforming the world today for the better is because of someone someone's long term vision so same people had invested capital human resources on something that was very risky the mission could have failed and can fail in the short term but in the long term india will win 75 million dollars is the price tag of that mission this investment is far smaller than many hollywood movies the budget for many hollywood movies as future leaders of india i really hope that you start appreciating innovation science investing in future as future leaders i also want you to know that good economics is also good politics we will of course discuss this mission from scientific standpoint from economic standpoint from geographical standpoint in time to come but because we are studying history for now i thought you should also know the historical view point so the way in 21st century isro leadership is thinking long term and not like the regular civilians hundreds of years ago netaji subhashchandra bose was also thinking beyond the first order derivatives can anyone tell me the difference between first order thinking and second order thinking what's the difference so in the first order thinking you consider the immediate consequences of an action immediate it is straightforward it is direct it is often driven by immediate gratification without taking into account what will come next it is like one of the political parties in india winning an election not because of the work that they do or the vision that they have but by promising freebies and people cheering for those freebies i know some of you will hate me for saying this and that is totally fine because i will criticize all the political parties basis facts 
ਹੈ ਨਾ ਵੀ ਵਿਲ ਆਫ ਕੋਰਸ ਅਪਰੀਸ਼ੀਏਟ ਦੀ ਵਰਕਸ ਆਫ ਸਮ ਆਫ ਥੋਸ ਪਾਰਟੀਸ ਇਫ ਦੇ ਜੈਨੂਇਨਲੀ ਡੂ ਗੁੱਡ ਵਰਕ ਆਈ ਡੂ ਨਾਟ ਸੀ ਐਂਡ ਆਈ ਡੋਨਟ ਥਿੰਕ ਯੂ ਆਲਸੋ ਨਨ ਆਫ ਯੂ ਸ਼ੁੱਡ ਬੀ ਅਲਾਈਨਿੰਗ ਵਿਦ ਆਈਡੀਓਲੋਜੀਸ ਆਫ ਥੀਸ ਪਾਰਟੀਸ ਬਿਕਾਜ਼ ਈਵਨ ਥੀਸ ਪਾਰਟੀਸ ਇਨ ਇੰਡੀਆ ਔਰ ਈਵਨ ਅਬਰੋਡ ਦੇ ਈਵਨ ਦੇ ਡੋਨਟ ਈਵਨ ਨੋ ਥੇਰ ਓਨ ਆਈਡੀਓਲੋਜੀਸ ਬੀਜੇਪੀ ਸਮਾਜਵਾਦੀ ਪਾਰਟੀ ਕਾਂਗਰਸ ਆਮ ਆਦਮੀ ਪਾਰਟੀ ਦੇ ਆਲ ਡੂ ਗੁੱਡ ਵਰਕ ਐਂਡ ਦੇ ਆਲਸੋ ਡੂ ਟੈਰੀਬਲ ਵਰਕ ਐਂਡ ਵਾਟ ਹੈਪਨਡ ਇਨ ਕਰਨਾਟਕ ਵਾਸ ਡਿਪਲੋਰੇਬਲ ਐਂਡ ਇਜ਼ ਡਿਪਲੋਰੇਬਲ 62000 ਕਰੋਰਸ ਇਜ਼ ਵਾਟ ਕਾਂਗਰਸਸ ਵਿਕਟਰੀ ਕੈਨ ਕਾਸਟ ਕਰਨਾਟਕ ਐਵਰੀ ਈਅਰ ਵਾਈ ਬਿਕਾਜ਼ ਦੇ ਹੈਵ ਡਿਸਾਈਡਡ ਟੂ ਡਿਵੋਟ 20% ਆਫ ਸਟੇਟਸ ਬਜਟ ਫॉर ਫ੍ਰੀਬੀਸ ਵਾਟ ਆਰ ਫ੍ਰੀਬੀਸ ਥੀਸ ਆਰ ਆਈਟਮਸ ਗਿਵਨ ਅਵੇ ਫॉर ਫ੍ਰੀ ਹੂ ਪੇਸ ਫॉर ਇਟ ਐਕਸਪੈਰ 62000 ਕਰੋਰਸ ਇਜ਼ ਵਾਟ the congress's victory can cost karnataka every year why because congress party has promised every female head of the family 2000 rupees per month it has promised unemployed diploma holder 1500 rupees per month graduates 3000 rupees per month 2000 units of free electricity free bus travel to all women throughout karnataka the list is endless people who voted basis the promises of free bees these are the people who can't think beyond the first order thinking so first order thinking is straightforward and direct driven by immediate gratification without taking into account what will come next people of karnataka who voted basis these freebies do not know what will come come next but the people with second order thinking will know now karnataka's debt is going to grow rapidly and it should it will get reflected also people with second order thinking look beyond the obvious they can see how one decision could trigger a chain reaction neeta ji subhashchandra bose was a man who thought beyond the first order thinking and that is perhaps the reason why he became a neeta neeta ji and not naam aadmi thinking beyond i think just about the immediate gratification in life so now let's move over to the story of indian national army what was it what was the azad hind fauj 1947 